Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is Center Stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in uh, the heart of downtown Honolulu. Um, and I want to let you know, just in case you are watching live, the show you just saw was not live. This is, it's October 5th. We are now here live. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, then I've confused you, and I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> my guest today is an incredible woman. I'm really anxious to introduce you to her. Her name is Yiman Mui, and she is a taiko drummer, a perf a performer, and teacher. And um, she has a very interesting philosophy about music and drumming. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Yiman Mui. And you'd, you'd prefer that I call you Man Man? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, my name is Man Man, and yes. OK. Yeah. Um, so you are, if someone says, picture in your mind a taiko drummer, I don't picture you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I, I will from now on. <laughs> but th that was not the first image that would pop into my head. Um, when did you start drumming? I started in 2010 in Hong Kong. Uh, I started in an all-female taiko drumming group in Hong Kong, and oh. we were kind of the only one group in Hong Kong. Yeah. Oh, the only female? Mm -hmm. Only taiko. taiko group, or at the time, we were the only group that focused on taiko drumming, and also uh, all-female music group in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And were you drawn to that? Had you already been drumming before you joined the group? No, um, I grew up playing a lot of music instruments. I learned piano. I used to play in the Chinese orchestra. I, pl I sing in the choir. I, or, um, I actually uh, studied music in, in college. And also, I got a master degree in musicology. Mm -hmm. And I, I play gamelan in Bali. And, but taiko drumming uh, was. I, I was that was the first time in six years ago. That's how I started. Oh and, wow! Yeah. N okay, now I didn't mean to do it this way, but I'm kind of wondering if you were very young when you started that. Um, well, I am 31 right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, so a lot of people think I'm still a teenager, like because I'm small and and yeah and so I actually started when I was 25. Yeah. Um, oh. After I finished my master's degree and. And I actually used to work in the film uh, industry doing sound editing uh, for a couple months. Um, so it's when I started playing taiko, like my life just changed all of a sudden because I never thought I would become a performer or a musician. Even I was surrounded by music all my life. Uh, even I get to learn a lot of musical instruments. But my experience that um, I never thought, like I never had the confidence like to become a performer or to focus in music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you must have just taken to it like a duck to water. Yeah, it's it's very empowering moment for me when I play uh, start playing taiko. Um, because uh, I think a, a lot of time we are used to the classical music tradition where we were, we were taught to uh, read music and and or we join competitions or in Hong Kong there's a lot of examinations and that's how like children grow up in that environment thinking uh, music is only for the talented or you have to work very hard on your own to become a musician you need first you need the talent and you need to work very hard um, I, I worked hard uh, maybe not that much but I was told that I have a little talent but when I told my piano teachers I, I want to study music because I think music is everywhere in the world, I'm sure there's something important about it. Um, but I were told a couple of times, I, I don't think you can become a performer. I don't see you could become a performer. Um, but when I start playing taiko, because uh, uh, I, I also love dancing, I love music, and taiko just give me the opportunity to do both. And also, when we learn taiko, we actually use our voice, we sing, and we use our movement. Um, so it's it's a combination of like using your mind and body and spirit um, to learn and to play. So that's why it all right away I just fell in love, um, and I think this is it. And 
And so six years ago when I started, so I decided to give it a try. And that's also how I became a music teacher, because I want to have a more flexible schedule to practice taiko and to focus on uh, uh, performing taiko. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it all started. <laughs> Wow, and I, I apologize for if you heard some sounds, uh, or if you heard some sounds while she was talking. They're, they've had fire alarms going off in the building. We're okay, just ignore them. You did a great job just running right through that. You are a performer. <laughs> <laughs> you went right through that. Um, so you immediately felt, yeah, this was a marriage of everything that you loved. And I, I, had, I haven't been exposed to taiko drumming a lot. I, you know, seen it on few t TV a few times, and I went to the concert at the university here, the dance, it was dance and taiko, did I, you? I was in it. You were in it? Yes, that was my first big project since I moved here from Hong Kong. Oh, it was fabulous, you were amazing. Thank you, yeah, <laughs> it, it was it great. It was a really awesome show, and it is just so stirring. You know, there's something about the drumming that rattles your sternum, you know, and, and, and the visual. Um, that's something that, uh, you know, clearly you have, you have an ear, you are drawn to the, the sound of it and you were working in sound editing, that's a, that's a big part of your life. But when you add the visual to it, it's just, um, it, it's important for, uh, you're right, there is music everywhere. I absolutely agree that I, um, I don't know how to put into words the definition of why that is important to us, but it just is in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you can, can you express yourself along mm -hmm. with it, that's such a healthy thing to do. Right. So, tell, so now you teach. Mm -hmm. um, can, tell us a little bit about your school. Um, so I work at uh, Taiko Center of the Pacific here in Honolulu. Um, so when I moved here in 2012, is, uh, I came here under a fellowship program offered by uh, the Taiko Center of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And the main part of this is to study with uh, Taiko Master Kenny Endo. And so since I came here, um, uh, well, before I came here, I worked a couple years in teaching the parent-child uh, music playgroup in Hong Kong. Uh, it, and so when I came here, um, my, my other teacher, Chisuko Endo, she, she told me, a lot of people asked her, like, can you teach three-year-old? Like, my, my children wants to start learning. Like, uh, can you teach a two-year-old or three-year-old? But a lot of times they're like, oh, they're too young. Like, I don't know. They don't know how, how to do that. So Chisuko Sensei told me, why don't you try? You have experience. Why don't you try doing it? So, so that's how I started combining uh, the... Uh, the music play group, uh, and, and, but just turn all the instruments into taiko drums. And I was actually, um, so when I started playing taiko, uh, when I uh, started teaching at uh, early childhood uh, music play group in Hong Kong, I was also exposed to the Orf uh, Shuork music education approach, which is an approach that uh, we use games, we use singing, we use dancing, uh, movement and a lot of different approach to teach music to children or to for me is to people of all age and skill levels so uh, I went to San Francisco to uh, to take the, the training and so basically I um, since I've become a taiko drummer I also started my teaching career so it goes hand in hand like oh. um, how like how taiko empower me uh, to become a musician and performer that I never thought I could become. And then I got exposed to the ORF teaching approach that gave me the tools to help uh, give the same experience to other people as well through taiko drumming. We're, we're showing some of the videos of the kids. It is so stinking cute to see those little guys drumming. And I bet it, it, I bet it is, are there any studies about what music um, or drumming does for a child when they start that young? I think uh, I came across a lot of articles to, that talk about early childhood music education mm -hmm. and definitely there's a, a good influence um, on the development uh, like their motor skills or their language skills or communication skills and and also like when we learn how to speak and everything in our life is that has a rhythm and has a musicality to it and, and also in my class, I encourage the parent, the, the family, to, uh, to engage in the drumming together. 
So they're not coming to the class to just learn from me as an instructor. They're actually learning from their parents. They're actually participating as a family. They make uh, music together. They create the musical experience all together. So um, the definitely a happy uh, environment. It's essential for a child children's development, and it's like, and also a lot of times um, in the in the old days, uh, uh, music is everywhere. You would see it in like. Uh, Maybe, uh, what, what I'm saying is like nowadays a lot of people feel embarrassed or nervous to make music. Um, but what I when I went to Bali uh, to study gamelan music, like when you you go everywhere, you see people just play a guitar, they sing, and children just grow up in such environment. They're all like very have very sensitive uh, ears, and they have a great music musicality, and but. Me growing up in Hong Kong uh, or in the big city, uh, everywhere around the world, people uh, tends not to just like like continue to be musical. Like every child is born like is to be musical, and like you see a lot of babies like when they hear music, they would oh, dance, yeah. they clap their hands, they would sing along. So teaching two to three year old is actually um, pretty easy for me because whatever you do, they will copy. Um, but it's interesting when I teach older children, like or adult. Um, a lot of people would feel embarrassed. Even a six-year-old is like, look at me like, why are you singing? Like, I don't want to sing. And, mm -hmm. But that is uh, something quite sad for me to see because I feel like if more people can enjoy music, it's just part of their everyday life. Like, how big a difference like, our life could be like, and to express ourselves and to express our feelings and just to find our own voice like for music. I think that's a very important quality of life. Oh, I, I agree, absolutely. We're gonna go to our first break, um, our only break. I don't know why I said first break. Um, thank you very much for that. I'm anxious to get back to the conversation, so stay with us. We'll be back in about a minute. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. Um, we are here to show you news, issues, and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. My name is John Waihe. And I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Hi, we're back on Center Stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, and I'm talking with Yiman Mui, a taiko drummer and teacher of taiko drumming. Okay, so the video that we saw, by the way, uh, you were about to say, how long ago was that? That was in 2013. Oh, a little while ago. Yes. Um, some of them still continue to play. Oh, and, good. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You see, kids when kids hear music, they immediately start dancing, and you know they they want to vocalize along with it. And somewhere along the line, we get embarrassed about it, and I don't understand why that happens. I know that of you know of course, if you are going to become a recording artist, you know so you got to be you know the cream of the crop to to make that happen. But that doesn't mean you can't mm -hmm. sing along. When I was a kid, and I grew up. I grew up in a town that I refer to as Mayberry all of the time. Do you, do you know what I am referencing when I say that? Oh. Um, there's a show, Andy Griffith show, that um, you can uh, go to YouTube and you can <laughs> watch it. I grew up in a tiny little town in God's country uh, in Indiana, mm. and we used to sing on the school bus. Uh, and it was just... Uh, this was grades, you know, um, not just elementary school students, all the way up through high school students. They played the radio, and we would sing along mm -hmm. with the top ten music. And I don't think that happens anymore. It's not just that we have changed as we've, um, we change as we get older as individuals, but 
um, society. as a society, yeah. we've stopped doing that for yes. some reason. And we, a lot of people thought m music is just for the talented or for the elite, and for just a small group of people. Yeah, but for me, I don't think so. It has like nowadays we just all when you go on the bus, you just see people looking at the phone or. People just spend a lot of time on the computer. Maybe they get to listen to a lot of music, but but ourselves like engaging in the music co activities is not like as as often as we can like we how we used to right. be. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people listen to music on headphones. And I love listening to music on headphones. You you know, you really hear the right. all the nuances yes. of it. Uh -huh. But it's different. You don't want to sing along. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you won't be on pitch if you do it that way for some reason. It never works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you have you, some of those students that we saw, some of the little ones are still uh, taking classes. Do you find that that happens a lot, that they stay with it? Uh, it depends, because a lot of times when they start going to school, because when they start, they, they are like two to three year old, like they, um, like when they start going to school, then they start to get busy, and sometimes they will have to make choices. Uh, but sometimes it's like the parents get more into it than the children, and so oh, so maybe um, the parents come back. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I have uh, uh, actually about uh, ten families. Uh, uh, they they started when they were um, when the children were like toddlers, mm -hmm. and they continue to play. And some of them actually continue to take the youth classes. Uh, the children take the youth classes on their own, and the parents continue to take the adult classes. And actually, a lot of them are still like doing pretty good. Like I'm actually excited to see how my parent-child class actually work in some way to prepare them to give them the foundation, and they feel comfortable musically to learn more pieces mm. as they go along. So yeah, like actually, a lot of them like still. Uh, remember a lot, or still like continue to enjoy music in their everyday life. Good. Mm -hmm. What do you, as an individual, feel like you gain from drumming? Um, wow. Well, first, it changed my life. Like I moved here because of drumming, and I became a performer and musician because of drumming, and I became a teacher because of all that. Um, so it's it's a very like it's. It's very empowering. Uh, I wouldn't have become the person I am today um, with, if I had never met, like, start playing taiko. Mm. Um, it is powerful. It is I mean, powerful, it is, right? Yeah. yeah, you've seen it. It's, it's loud. You and em, but you embody power. Those drummers on the stage are powerful people. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. actually, throughout the training, um, you, it does require a lot of stamina. And so I also need to, like, other than just playing, uh, when we practice drumming, we also need to do a lot of exercise, like, to keep our stamina. And, uh, and also, like, uh, actually studying here gave me a lot of opportunity because study with Kenny Sensei, uh, he introduced us to some of the classical Japanese drumming, which is, like, like musically is very uh, uh, challenging. And that helps me a lot, like to become more versatile and in learning uh, more difficult music. Um, and so, yeah, that that's a very big question. Okay. Like, yeah, it's a big question. I'm sorry, I kind of <laughs> threw that out there, but thank you did very nicely with the answer. Um, when you're learning taiko, are you? I was in the band when I was in high school, you know, and I know the drummers had written music the same way we did. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at music? Um, sometimes, uh, but most of the time we sing the rhythms. Um, so for like for like for, because some of the compositions uh, the composer do use like um, maybe Western notation to to notate it, or like some of the more the traditional or classical drummings like they have their own way of notating, mm -hmm. and which actually require you to sing along. Uh, like the more you sing it, uh, we always say that. I was, Teacher always say that uh, we, the more you sing it, like the better you can play it. Like you can only play it if you can sing it. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of apply the same philosophy in my children's class. Um, uh, so like in in our regular taiko drumming, we sing like what we call the kuchi shoga. Like for example, like don don do do tsuku don do don, like some, something like that with like the specific specific language of drumming. Mm -hmm. But for me in my taiko class, I turn that into singing. 
like maybe nonsense syllables or maybe just a song. Um, and then like because of the process of singing, then you apply it on the drums and you play the rhythms, you play what you sing. And I found that is actually a very efficient way like to learn, you, like not only for uh, children or for people with not a lot of musical background or even for myself, like I, 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 I get a better listening experience like through singing. Yeah. Interesting. While you were talking about it, I was thinking, <laughs> so it, 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 you have to have a strong body to drum, to, to do this sort of drumming. And also, I'm sure it, it builds your muscles, mm -hmm. you know, so I was, <laughs> so I'm thinking this would be something great for upper arm work. Well, it's a full body. Yeah. Like, it's actually really great for core uh, um, uh, training. Like and, and for me, I have to do a lot of core training, like to to become better at taiko too. Because like technically, you don't really use your arm muscle. Like you actually relax your upper body and you you go into the form and you use your core power to get a nice sound. Oh. Like to use to to move your body and get a nice sound out of the drum. So it's not just like mus muscle power. It's actually how you utilize the form or the gravity and the, um, to support you to get a good sound out of the drum. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, all right, That's, I want to try this. This sounds interesting. And, and the thought of just learning to the drumming part, is, I thought, oh, I, I don't know if I could even do that. But if you add the singing to it, that I could, that mm -hmm. part of it I could learn. Um, so you, what sort of, uh, t tell me about some of the performances that you've put together, some of the programs. Um, well, so you've seen the Taiko Drum and Dance concert uh, mm -hmm. here. That was actually like what I call it my dream come true, like putting every part of me together, uh, like dancing and, and drumming. Um, so actually this past, past two years, I've been working with my friend uh, Joe Small. Uh, he based in uh, LA. So we put together a show um, that make a really bold comments uh, to talk about like the hyper masculinity hyper masculinity culture in the Japanese culture and American culture and also um, a lot of times we study the Japanese art form um, in the classroom or dojo or maybe just in our society we come across a lot of uh, the issues like hyper masculinity uh, gender expectations um, so we did a show about it with taiko drumming and so for me it's actually a very personal experience um, like you said at the beginning, when you see me, like you don't picture me to be playing such a uh, strong like art form of playing the big drum or like a lot of people think of taiko as a very masculine uh, uh, performing arts. But um, there are actually, for me, there's like other uh, aspects of taiko drumming. Like, like even if we're gentle, we play it in a feminine way, you can still be powerful. And and also myself as um, as an Asian, as a Chinese who grew up in Hong Kong, and I'm playing a Japanese art form. Uh, some a lot of people would ask me, why do you go to the U.S. to play taiko? Why didn't you go to Japan? Like, yeah. but Japan, going to Japan is still important. But for me, taiko, I look at it as a pure performing arts, as uh, it has evolved to become like a performing arts and taiko is actually growing around the world. Like not only in Japan and in the US, there are taiko groups in Europe and in everywhere in South America. And, and funny how one time when I told this story to my friend about people asking me why I didn't go to Japan and my friend raised a really good point. He said, how come people don't ask why Yo-Yo Ma didn't go to Europe to study cello? So like basically it's the same thing, like taiko is becoming a musical instrument. And, and so through the work that I've been doing, like I'm trying like myself thinking about all these issues, but also trying to ask this question like to my friends and to people around me, like to also like need to think more out of the box about a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you raised that because that was a question that I had when I looked at your bio. Why did you come? You came here. Do we have the <laughs> best school? I didn't even yeah, recognize that. Um, it, do you have... Uh, you, you grew up around music. Do you have other professional musicians in your family? Um, actually, no. I. What? what <laughs> you were not sure? Well, just like a, 
like my yeah no because my 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 father likes music a lot, but he is the listener. Like he just like appreciate yeah. music a lot. But like I think in Hong Kong, a lot of families like they the like my generation, we get to expose to music a lot. But really becoming a musician is a very different story. A lot of people is like, how are you gonna make money? How are you gonna make a living? Mm. And that's what my parents said. Yeah, <laughs> study acting. Same, same. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so not in my family. And when I told my family that I'm moving to Hawaii to play taiko, they're like, oh, okay, um, okay, have fun. And okay. they, they just don't really know what I'm doing. Or even my my classmates from school. I actually went to business school. I almost became uh, an, an accountant or auditor instead of became, becoming a <laughs> music major. So yeah, a lot of friends are still like, wow, I'm, I'm glad she's really like pursuing her dream. Like a lot of people are not uh, afraid like, or not even like think like have the guts to think about. Hey, that is true. A lot of people don't know what their dream is. A lot of people, when you ask, what do you want? They'll come up with what they think they can get or they mm -hmm. think they might deserve. And, right. you know, maybe that's because you have been in touch with the musical part of you that you uh, dare to dream and go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm really thankful. Like, and my parents are very supportive and they're very open minded too. Like, to allow me to, like, really try to do things that, like, okay, we'll see how it works, but not really sure the outcome. But I'm, yeah. But I'm really thankful, like, because my father really thinks the arts it's very important as like to become a better person. Like, it's a very important quality um, that it's that it's essential. Like, it is, mm -hmm. and that is what this show is all about. Thank you very much for being on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you I for having that. me. And that was, and you wrapped that up really nicely too. You're <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. I, I appreciate meeting you. I'm so glad I got to meet the person who put together that dance concert. It really was a, a dance and drum concert. It really was amazing. And I look forward to seeing more about you. And there's a yimanmui.com is your website. Mm -hmm. um, and you, also the school's website is? taikoarts.com. taikoarts.com. Check it out. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Yim, uh, Man Man. Sorry. Um, there's a few other people in the studio I would like to thank our floor manager, Rich Prapus, who's right over there. Thank you, Rich. And our, we have a floor manager in training, Robert, I didn't catch your last name. Mackling. Inkling? Mackling. Mackling. He's our new floor manager. He's right over there. Thank you. And our studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear. Thanks as always, Zuri. And Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. Thank you for being here. We will see you next week, Wednesday at 2 o'clock, Center Stage. Bye.